Good morning and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God has rest for your soul. It's His promise for us. He provided rest for our souls. You know, the, the funny thing is I was just about to go into prayer. I was thanking God for who He is and thanking Him that He is God, a God who is faithful to all of his promises. I was just about to just, you know, just thank him. And th- this came to my mind. The funny thing is, is that we're seated in heavenly places. Our spirit is seated in heavenly places. So my spirit is already okay. My soul, however, while I'm in this earth, seems to be so troubled. But God didn't bring us trouble. God promised rest if we would come to Him. Again, let's look at these scriptures real quick. I I don't know which scriptures to go to first, but there's three of them that I can think of right now. And they all have to do with come. C-O-M-E, come. Come while it is time to come. You know, come while I am near, come while I can be found, come to me, you know. So Isaiah 55, let's run there first. Isaiah 55. It says in verse, let's start in 55 and 1. I I know this is like one of my, my ones that I always read, but this word it it takes a lot to get the the word into the ground of your life into the soul we are so offended let me say it again we are so offended by everything that is happening in this life that it's so easy to live by our feelings by what our senses are telling us but god is spirit and those that worship him worship him in spirit and in truth This word of truth that comes from God has to penetrate this soul. So yeah, much reading. Your spirit is is seated in heavenly places. Your spirit is saying, yes, I believe, but it's weak and it needs to eat and it needs to drink. You need to build up in prayer before God. You need to build up in the word of truth to minister to your own spirit, soul, and bodies to make it conform to the way that God is calling it to conform to. You're supposed to be coming into the likeness of Jesus Christ, and nothing is impossible for him. And what I'm saying by reading, see, we understand that God is with us, and that the Spirit of God is working this word into the ground of our hearts. But God is not making you do it. He's not going to force you to eat his word. We can believe God and say, oh, I believe God all we want to and know that there is a God and still not know who he is. So this reading and eating and drinking this word of truth will cause you to know who God is. So listen, Isaiah 55. Ho, it's like, yo, everyone that thirsts comes, come ye to me. If you, if you're thirsty, come to, come to God. Come to the waters. And he that hath no money, come and buy, eat and drink, that your soul, that that you, come, sorry, let me do it again, buy and eat, yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Sometimes I get a little excited and I get ahead of myself, I'm sorry about that. Verse 2, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and labor for that which does not satisfy Listen diligently unto me. Hearken unto me. Listen. Uh, Listen to me and eat that ye which is good. Eat that which is good. And your soul will delight in the fatness. Listen. Verse 3. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. Hallelujah. And will make, and I will make. He says, God says, I will make. An everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Believe me, God keeps all of his promises. Keep on reading on in Isaiah, but we got to move on to Matthew chapter 
11. Matthew chapter 11 says, in verse 27, All things are delivered unto me. This is Jesus speaking. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knows the Son by, but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And to whomsoever the Son will reveal him, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. I think I might have skipped a verse. I'm going to read it again anyway, because that's good. Jesus is saying, come on to me, all you, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely and, and lowly, not lonely, lowly of heart and you shall find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light Jesus' yoke Jesus' burden is it's all about who God is it's who the father is it's who he is God who created the world and all that there is in it he has an easy yoke huh? he does and take my take my burden his burden is light in other words all the cares of this life have been taken up god can handle everything there's nothing too hard there's nothing impossible for him he alone is god and he is all sufficient take yourself and and just call up call on his name when you read the word of truth Think about it. Believe it and receive what God has promised because he is God. You think about all the things that God has made. What is impossible for him? You think about it. He healed the sick. He forgave sins. He took away the shame. He rolled away a huge rock. He died and rose again. For us God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us that's any you can find that in Ephesians chapter 3 towards the end listen revelations 22 and 17 says this is about entering the rest of God God has rest for your soul it's a, Re Revelations chapter 22, verse 16 and 17. They say, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come and let the them that hear say, come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely come and eat and drink the word of truth and let God restore your heart and mind to the way God had created man in the first place what he had intended for all of our lives in the first place so that you can live in the freedom that God has intended for you to live in you don't have to live with a crushed spirit you don't have to bro live with a broken heart you don't have to live with all of this anxiety always living on the inside of you. You could come into the rest of God and live in the, the, the grace of God. Have the freedom to do the things you would do. And have your soul dwell at ease. God is able to take away all the trouble. I mean, it's not like trouble won't be there. But God gives you the peace and the patience to deal with the things that you need to deal with and those things that would get somebody else saved so that they would know him. God is good. Let me tell you, God is so good that he allows you to be here. <laughs> I don't want to say it like that. That's wrong. <laughs> 
But the truth is, is that God loves you. And he does allow you to be here uh, uh, the, all these days of the, life, of the life that you have been here. But let's start making our days uh, loving days, patient days, holy days. How about that one? Holy days. You know, and understand this. What is holiness? Holiness is not just some nice clean place to live in. Holiness is not absolute perfection in my flesh. I will not do wrong today. I will not do wrong today. God's holiness is his righteousness. His righteousness is so right that whatever God says it is, it is finished. It is done. He said that he would give us, he would, he would give us his covenant, his promise. He would fulfill his promise in us. Did you ever read of what God's promises were? You're so busy studying the curse of the law and all the broken things in your life that came from the curse of the law. What is, what was the curse and, and how did this law begin? This law began when man decided not to believe God, not believe what he said. So we take up this word of truth and we begin to eat it and drink it because we believe what God said. And therefore, all because of what Jesus, and I would say, like, therefore, because of what Jesus did when he went to the cross, breaking the curse, the, the, the man who knew no sin, took on sin, my sin, your sin, the whole world, and crucified the flesh, the flesh that said, I don't believe God. Crucify the thoughts of my mind that set ourselves against God and unto his death and resurrection Jesus Christ took on the sin of the whole world and bring in true holiness true perfection was faith in God is faith in God true perfection is faith in God if you want to be holy believe who God is believe everything that has come out of his mouth every word of this book that he has spoken and let him bring that translation to you that you need today to fulfill the steps that he has called you to walk in today. God is able to do it. I'm telling you, able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And he washes us and cleanses us with his word of truth so that we can walk the way that he planned us to walk. God has good things in mind for you. He'll prepare you for everything that you've got to face. And we give thanks and praise to God because he has told us how to enter in. Entering into the rest of God is faith in God. Entering into the rest of God is believing who that he is God. Believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Believing that he died and rose again. Believing that everything that, everything that is necessary, everything that is needed, God has provided. But first, Get this one whole sandwich. <laughs> God is. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Amen. Uh, this is Pastor Cheryl Jackson with Get the Word in Your Face International. Have a great day. Have an awesome day. In Jesus' name, amen.